equations and inequalities, square root equations. Before we have a look at square root equations, I'm just going to point out the difference between an equation where we already have the root given to us and where we are going to add our own square root. So on the left, there's already a root right from the beginning, which implies that it's only the positive root. So in this case, to get rid of the square root, I'm going to square both sides and I will have x is equal to 4. On the right, I have a square and I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to add my own square root. When I add my own square root on the right, I need to remember that I can have the positive or the negative answer. So in this case, x can be plus or minus 2. So just be aware of the difference. If the square root has been given, you don't have two options anymore, but the sign in front of the square root shows you which option you are working with. Let's have a look at examples where the square root is given in the question. If we have a look at example one, we have our square root equation, and we would like to square both sides to get rid of the square root. An important thing to remember is that you should always only square once the square root term is on its own on one side of the equation. So in this example, we are going to start off by taking the minus x and adding it on the right. Now my square root term is alone, so I can square both sides. And on the left, I'll be left with x plus 6. On the right, x squared. Now I have my quadratic equation, which means I'm going to take all the terms to one side, equal to 0, and then I will factorize. And in this case, it will be x minus 3, x plus 2. So I have two answers, x is 3, or x is minus 2. Another very important thing to remember with square root equations is just like with fraction equations to always test your answer. To test, we are going to focus on the step where the square root is alone on one side. And in this case, we can clearly see that the positive root has been given. So when we substitute in our first possible answer of 3, it should equal 3, which is positive, which means x can be equal to 3. But if we now substitute in minus 2 into the equation, it says here that the positive root will now be equal to a negative value, which is not possible, so minus 2 is not valid. So it's important to always test your answers to see whether you actually do get a positive root. Example 2. Once again, I'm going to start off to get my term that has the square root in it alone on one side. So I'm going to add x on the right. Now that the square root term is alone, I can square both sides. And this is now a very important step. On the left, when I square, I'm left only with x plus 3. On the right, when I square, I now have two brackets with two terms inside. And when I multiply that out, I will, I will have 1 plus 2x plus x squared. That middle term is important to remember. Now I have my quadratic equation again. So I'm going to take all the terms to one side equal to 0. And once again, I can then factorize into x plus 2 x minus 1. And that means x can either be negative 2 or x can be 1. Now I need to remember to test my answers. So if I focus on the step where the square root term is alone and I now substitute my possible answers, I'm going to have minus 2 plus 3 inside the root equal to 1 minus 2. And this gives me that the positive root 
will be equal to a negative number, which is not valid. When I go and substitute in 1 in x's place, I will get 1 plus 1. So my positive root will be equal to a positive answer, which is perfectly fine. So x equals 1 is my solution. In example 3, my square root term is already alone on one side. And this means I can start off by squaring both sides. Once again, you need to now be careful. If I square the left, the 3 and the square root has to be squared. So I will end up with 3 times 3, which is 9. And the root squared will simply give me x plus 3. On the right, I need to once again remember my middle term, minus 14x. And now I can simplify the left and then get it into the standard form equal to 0. Now I can factorize into x minus 22 multiplied by x minus 1. So x can either be 22 or x can be 1. If I go and test, I'm going to focus on the first step already and substitute my two possible answers. So if I go and substitute 22, I will get my positive root is equal to a positive answer, which is perfectly fine. So x can be 22. If I substitute 1 in there, I get that my positive root is equal to a negative number, which is not possible, so 1 is not valid. It can happen that both answers are acceptable. It can happen that only one, like in our examples, will be acceptable. And it can happen that neither of the two are acceptable.